Hey folks, Alan Manic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're taking a look at something folks have asked about, the seven piece gear wrench hammer and dolly set. Is this the affordable hammer and dolly set that you should be buying? Let's check it out. Now I mention hammers and dollies quite often on this channel because personally, I use them day in, day out. As a professional metal shaper, fabricator, auto restorer, I need quality hammers and dollies. And I come at this from that perspective. A lot of the things I try to teach you folks require a quality set of hammers and dollies to achieve a good result. Previously, I reviewed the Ron Covell hammer and dolly set. That was the most recent one I checked out. And I called that the best bang for your buck hammer and dolly set you can buy today. About a year and a half ago, I reviewed the Harbor Freight hammer and dolly set. I'll tell you right now, I'm not gonna bother linking that video because spoiler alert, I really, really do not like these hammers. I don't think you should buy them. So now that brings us to the seven piece gear wrench hammer and dolly set. I'm gonna show you what comes with the set. I'm gonna compare it to the other sets that I've reviewed previously. And then I'm gonna tell you what I really think of this set from actually using it. At a third of the price of the Ron Covell set and a little over double the price of the Harbor Freight set at $92.05 on Amazon, is this set worth it? Let's find out. This set comes in a blow molded storage case so you can keep it organized, transport it around with you, or if you don't have room in your toolbox, you can store it in here. So now with the three hammers that you get in this set, you get two that have true flat faces. They are flat. And that's actually kind of a slight negative. You want to have like a 12 inch, a 24 inch radius, so it allows for a little bit of give. If you're hammering on a flat piece of metal with a true flat hammer, you would need to hit exactly square every time to not have the edge dig into the material. A quality body hammer has a little bit of a radius to the head of the hammer. This does not. It's a true flat on these two flat faced hammers. The one flat face hammer is both a round face on one side and a square face on the other side, which is a kind of nice thing to see. I like the square faces for getting up to edges. The other one is a round face with a shrinking hammer on the other side. As I've said in previous videos, I do not use a shrinking hammer ever. I really never use it. Personally, if it was me, I might consider chopping off that and having like a, a stubby headed hammer rather than having the shrinking hammer. You may find use for that. Personally, I do not use one. And then the third hammer that comes in the set is the one that's painted red. Personally, this is the hammer I would use most often out of the set. It's a pick hammer, so it's got that pick on the backside for knocking up slight low spots or knocking down slight high spots, depending how you want to use it. And on the other side, you don't have a true flat face. It is not dead flat, and that's great to see. But it's also not a 12 inch radius like a standard quote unquote flat faced hammer would be. This one is a nine inch radius, which is a little bit strange. As far as a hammer is concerned, this is a weird shape. However, since the other two are true flat faces, this is the one I would use because it would allow for that forgiveness. It would allow me to strike with a slight angle to my blows and still not ding and dent the panel nearly as badly as a true flat face hammer would. Now let's go ahead and talk about the four dollies. You get a toe dolly. This is probably one of my number one most used dollies. This one has flat surfaces on various portions of it, which is really handy for truly flattening things out. You get the, the heavier radius on the one end, and you have a overall kind of shapely radius, a low crown radius on the backside of this dolly. Next up, you've got a heel dolly. Also another heavily used one for me. You got that nice heavy radius on there too. You can actually use the form metal around or get into deeper radiuses or heavier radiuses to back them up. You also have a gentler radius on the top side and again true flats which are really handy to have maybe butt up against the flange or just flatten something out. Really really handy dolly to have. The set also comes with what some companies call a general purpose dolly. I call a railroad dolly. This is also a really handy one. It's really handy to hold on to to back up lower crown panels, get up behind fender dents and really hold on to it. A really useful dolly. You got the heavier crown on the one side with the smaller surface area and then the still fairly heavy crown on the other end but a larger surface area to work with. This is the first of the dollies that I'm showing you that still has this cast rough section that's just painted red on it rather than being finished off so it could be a useful section. It's painted and unfinished for an actual usable surface so that's a little disappointing to see. 
And the last one in the set is the Kama Dolly. This is a really nice thing to see in the set. I like that it has this one. I usually use it in this kind of configuration here where I kind of rest that upper portion on my hand and I can push it up into tighter areas or up against fenders and doors and such and get into those flatter sections to work with. Again, on this one, you have the painted unfinished back and actually around this radius as well. So you can't fully work your way around the radius on this one. First and foremost, the Harbor Freight set, anytime we compare these hammers to one another, the Harbor Freight set is a clear cut negative. It's a loser. It is not nearly as well designed as the gear wrench set is. You have the metal handle design, which is just a confusing design on the Harbor Freight ones. The fit and finish, the actual design of the heads of these hammers just seems off. You have the true flat face on all of the hammers that come in that set. At least with the gear wrench set, you have that nine inch radius one, which is more usable in my opinion than the true flat faces that come on all of the Harbor Freight ones. The pick design on the back of the Harbor Freight one compared to the gear wrench one, it's way, way too sharp of a point, though it is a lot meatier, so you could shape it into a function bigger dome if you wanted to. And then when you compare the gear wrench pick design to the Ron Covell pick design, I actually kind of like the gear wrench one slightly better. It's closer to the shape that I would actually find usable for myself. The Ron Covell one is a good overall design and the finish on the pick is better. The finish on the gear wrench pick is kind of rough. They, they really just kind of hit it to a belt sander and called it done. But the actual shape of the gear wrench one is closer to what I would use. Here is my snap on pick hammer that I most commonly use when I actually want to use a pick hammer. And you can see how much I've blunted it down and rounded off the tip of it. I'm going to do that to the Covell hammer. But like I said, the gear wrench one is closer to that shape already. Now, the biggest difference between these hammers is weight. The weight balance on these hammers is drastically different between them. Now this test is not exceptionally scientific. I left the hammer head in the middle of the scale and I just held up the very end of the handle with a finger to kind of see where the weight balance was between these things. The gear wrench hammer and the Covell hammer are better overall weights, but there's a huge difference here. These both have wooden handles. I love the wooden handles on these. They're both hickory wooden handles, but the gear wrench one feels like the handle is made of balsa wood. The balance is way off. It's only a few ounce difference, but these hammers weigh less than a pound. So a few ounces here or there makes a big difference to both the actual function of the hammer and the feel of it in your hand. How controllable it's gonna be, how tiring it's gonna be on your wrist, this does matter in the long run. You gotta remember when you're really using a hammer and dolly, you're striking material literally thousands of times. So that can really add up when the weight balance is off. Now let's go ahead and talk about the difference between the dollies. Comparing the Harbor Freight dollies to the gear wrench dollies, it's a night and day difference. The gear wrench dolly is vastly superior to the Harbor Freight dollies. The gear wrench ones have more usable surfaces because they don't have these indents in them, these sections that are completely unusable on the Harbor Freight ones. Now, some of them on the gear wrench ones are still unfinished and unpainted, and that's unfortunate to see but there are far more usable surfaces on the dollies of the gear wrench set right out of the box than there are on the Harbor Freight ones. The other big thing here is weight. Dollies are basically hand anvils. You need some heft to them. They need to weigh something. They can't be very light. The Harbor Freight ones are quite light. When you compare them to the gear wrench ones, the gear wrench ones are vastly superior as far as weight is concerned. Now, when you step up to the Covell ones, well, the Covell ones are again a step up. They are heavier than the gear wrench ones. Also the finish overall on the Covell ones is just superior. There are no places on the Covell ones that are not usable. They might have radiuses that I would personally knock down or, or crisp edges I would like to see rounded off, but the gear wrench ones have far more of those and worse edges that would really need some attention, unlike the Covell ones, which are better out of the box in my opinion. Lastly, I do think that the four dollies you get in the gear wrench set is a good assortment. It is a really usable assortment, though I did find when I was using it this week, I kind of kept going back to the toolbox and grabbing one of my Martin Tools dollies because I needed a heavier radius for the fender I was working on. And this just didn't quite meet my needs in the situation I was really using this on testing it out. The Covell set comes with one more dolly. It's a 10 piece set and it's a slightly different assortment. So I'm not gonna hold that against any of these. They all come with different things versus each other. That's kind of a pick your own poison situation. So now this gear wrench set is a little over double the price of the Harbor Freight set, but honestly, it is a vastly superior product in design and finish. It is just 
better. I haven't seen any marking in the dollies. They're not getting beat up from stretching welds. The first weld I stretched on the Harbor Freight set started to mar the material. I'm not getting that on the gear wrench set right off the bat. These are just a better product. I said it in my review of the Harbor Freight set and I stand behind it. I really think that that Harbor Freight set was designed by somebody who looked at a picture of a hammer and dolly set and said, we can make that. They never actually used a set. So this set here seems like somebody at least had an idea of what a body hammer set was supposed to be. In the end, I still think the Covell hammer and dolly set is the best bang for your buck you can get right now. 10 piece set, $300. I truly, really recommend it. And if you think you might be willing to spend that money, you really want to get into this or you like this hobby, I recommend that set. For an entry level set, for a one time use, for something you're not going to use often, this gear wrench set is a pretty darn good set at $92. My biggest gripe is, like I said, the weight balance. These two hammers held side by side here feel vastly different. I can't express that enough. This gear wrench set just it feels so weird to me, but if you're not used to the professional grade stuff, you may never notice that. So this set here, I think it's actually a decent value for what it is. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. You can find a link in the description down below to pick out this set if you want to. That is an affiliate link. Purchases through that don't cost you anything more, but they help out in production of this channel. All right, folks, go ahead and drop the video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this set? Is it gonna be a second set for you? Are you gonna pick one up for an entry level set or for a friend maybe? Let me know in the comments down below. Check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hot rod hippie to directly support this channel and go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date with all the content every week. Thanks for coming around folks.